this stage and members will receive further information in due course on that. I'm happy to take any questions upon the items in the report. That's so happy. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I, I know some of this in terms of steps have been agreed previously as they to an ATM. No problem from, from my point of view, that's for sure. Uh, but certainly, it streamlines it, and, and, and which is the main thrust of, of, the, of this, I, I, I presume. But I think it's important as well to explain the, the, the mandates there uh, and the accountability and, and the checks and balances as well. Because, because it says, if you, if you look in there on page 101 on, um, on in 4.13, it says, second paragraph, it says, to note where the combined authority has agreed to the allocation of pre-development funding as a percentage of the of the, of the SIF funds. It's, it's, it's not quite clear that, you know. Uh, I mean, for instance, in, in some local authorities, uh, so, some officers are delegated with, uh, with a certain amount that they can uh, that, that they can spend or use, etc. Just needs to be a bit clearer that. Um, but but I think I think the, the the most important thing is the accountability uh, and how. How that, how that goes through the system. The percentage allocations are dependent upon the type of project. So there's different uh, percentages for transport vis-a-vis -vis any other regeneration. And, and as far as I'm aware, those percentages have already been translated into the constitution, but there was just the omission of, of that final step. Um, but I will double check that and, and ensure that, that that is very clear. Yeah, so I was going to jump in. If I could just follow up on that, the, the reason why it's percentage rather than an actual amount is uh, members will be aware that rail schemes in particular are have an extremely expensive pre development stage for network rail, um, basically, all network rail are in charge of. So uh, in order to reflect that in the constitution, so we're going to come back from the combined authority each time network rail um, changed estimates for us. Uh, we, we, we use percentages at threshold rather than an actual amount. Uh, what you probably find is on other regeneration schemes that aren't transport related or basically aren't rail related, the amounts will be, will be, will be lower in value for the same in the percentage term. Thanks for that, John. It's just that a bit of a matrix. It's just that it, on, in this particular one, it, it's the SIF funding. That's all. And uh, uh, just need to make it clear. That's all I'm saying. Just, just on that, I'm grateful for the member for bringing that to our attention. Um, I mean, it gives an example uh, on page 101. A project may be funded from the town centre fund, but it also be funded from the local growth fund. I'm assuming that what this is saying is that if a project qualifies to be funded on both bases, you know, in other words, there's a case for funding it from the Bill Fund or through the Town Centre Fund, and it's proposed that the, the, the nature of the funding or the source of the funding be changed, um, then as long as that's done with proper delegated authority and transparency and so on, there isn't an issue. But it's not saying, presumably, that if a project is specifically <laughs> a town centre uh, project and couldn't ordinarily be funded for the local growth fund, you could decide to do that. Um, in other words, to, 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 to engage in that sort of environment or use of different money for different purposes, purpose, for the purpose, uh, the purpose would have to qualify for both funds rather than you just simply be able to just take from one to fund a project that should be funded from another. Have I made that clear? Yeah. If I have, then I probably not. No, no I, think that, I think that's very clear and I can take that one. It's, it, we will still absolutely have to comply by the terms of the of each individual piece of grant funding. So no, we, we would not be able to apply. Well, this is not seeking a delegate. Well, we can't seek a delegation to, um, to, to not abide by the, the funders, um, which is generally government departments with their own requirements on the fund. It's just as it's just to optimise the value we get and it reflects the fact that it is a strategic investment fund um, and you know it has been devolved to us to, to manage it as we as we see fit but obviously in accordance with the um, with any 
with any obligations we've got from the government. Yeah. That's on me, Effie. Thanks, Chair. Um, it's been mentioned that a quarterly report of any changes will go to the combined authority. Can I ask that it also comes to this uh, meeting, please? I'll add that to the recommendations if people are happy to accept that. Second, the recommendation. Are there any more questions? Ask Karen. Example you used in the uh, land transactions being delegated to officers was this building and leasing. Yes. Could you clarify for me any land or assets owned by Mersey Travel if they are also delegated? How how we see this and if there's even a register of assets that we can see currently with valuations on the date of the valuation so that we can take a line of the stand before delegation started. Mersey Travel does have land assets, um, so for example the bus station is a Mersey Travel asset. Um, this building is a CA asset together with the tunnels and all the tunnels surrounding land, so there is quite a lot of land holding in the two different entities. The Mersey Travel um, land is dealt with by the Mersey Travel Executive, which is the directors taking decisions upon that, um, and the CA in the constitution as currently drafted would take decisions for the CA land. Um, and that's what the leaders are, are proposing to delegate to the director team. Um, and so there is there is information about the asset register. We can present that, I'm sure, at a, a future meeting about the, the land holding and values, etc. Um, I'm looking at Sarah now. She's a bit more afraid than I am. With permission, Chair. Um, within the account, while it won't go down to individual asset, there are notes which break down and give valuations of all the assets held by both Mersey Travel and the Combined Authority, by freehold, leasehold, property, infrastructure assets. So there is that level of detail. Um, if you wanted to see it in more information, we do have that, albeit it's not published for as part of the accounts, but we can provide that. Yeah, thank you. I was thinking more of the, obviously the balance sheet is one day in the particular financial year end. So I'm thinking of, as this decision is taken, if we could see the balance and valuation of those assets. I don't need it in great detail, but it would be good for us to understand, prior to delegation, what the valuation was. Okay. Um, we wouldn't have that level of detail on valuations because the requirement is for them to be subject to a five-year rule for review. Um, however, the valuations were all updated this year. So to that extent, if you were to revert to the 17, eight, the 1819 account, sorry, um, they will be values that are the most current. But perhaps worth saying that the, the tunnels are infrastructure assets and therefore are not held at current cost, they are at historic cost. So they, they will only change the extent that something depletes or there is an addition to those assets. Could I also point out that this delegation doesn't allow officers to dispose of any of those assets, so it shouldn't affect the value of the portfolio. It, it's about engaging any lead. It's about renting them um, to to a third party. Um, so again, we're not delegating authority to dispose of assets. That would still need to be um, a matter for the combined authority. Yeah, sorry, I was only looking for clarification because plans to do something with the land will affect its value. So I know you're not you're not uh, allowed to sell, but um, when it's delegated to officers and plans they come up with, if those plans are public, the natural market value of the land may alter. That, that was my uh, concern, so we can understand the valuations in today's terms. I think ultimately as well that it's worth pointing out that if Mersey Travel wish to dispose of some of its land, it has to seek CA approval as well. Okay, so are there any more comments or questions? Um, can I ask you to agree the recommendation set up on page 97, please? us to the end of the meeting and um, can I thank you all very much for your attendance and thank the officers for the excellent reports we've had.
and thank the members of the public. I wish you a safe journey home. Thank you.